The SpaceX Falcon relanding system is very complex. The main objective of the Falcon booster is to move from its current position and land on the floating platform, by accurately controlling its position and thrust, with great precision. There are many paths to reach the platform, but the algorithm determines the optimal path to land, given the multiple constraints the Falcon is restricted with. The onboard computer, processed the insane number of variables involved in the process, and enables the Falcon to land safely. The Falcon consists of the following components which makes it land with astonishing accuracy. First, the engine reignition system, which ignites the engine again, after separation from the payload launch. This is the key technology, without which landing is not possible. The Falcon has the high-precision GPS system to know its position from the platform. The guidance or positioning system, tells the processor the orientation of the Falcon body, and the roll angle. On the output, we have the gimbaled engines, which can be moved to control the direction of the thrust, which is called thrust vectoring. The attitude control system, ACS, has the ACS thrusters on the sides, which operate and control the roll orientation of the body. The fins on the top, are designed to operate even in hypersonic conditions at higher altitudes, which can be controlled to provide vertical balancing of the Falcon body using aerodynamics. The fuel control system, which meters the fuel and control the thrust. The control system used in Falcon is the closed loop control system. To understand in simple terms, let us consider this situation. When you are driving a car and see a person in front of your car, the eyes, which are the sensors, detect the object in front and the distance from the object. This signal is sent to your brain, which is the processor. Based on the difference between the safe distance and the input signal distance, the brain decides which path to take or to apply brakes. This difference is called the error signal. The decision is taken by the algorithm stored in the brain. The output command is then sent to the legs, which are the actuators. So, this is an example of a control system. As the brakes or accelerator is pressed, the distance is being continuously monitored and sent to the brain by the eyes. This distance signal input is the feedback. Based on the feedback, the output signal from the brain changes continuously. This is closed loop control system. In the Falcon, the position, orientation and the altitude of the body is continuously measured by the input sensors like the GPS. This input is given to the onboard computer. The computer compares the optimal path calculated by the algorithm and the actual position of the Falcon. This difference provides the error signal. Based on this error signal, the computer sends the output signal to the actuator drive controllers, which then drives the various output actuators. The actuators like the gimbaled engine angle actuator, fin actuator, fuel flow system and ACS thrusters are actuated to control the position and the orientation of Falcon with respect to the landing platform. Again the new position of the Falcon is given as feedback signal by the input sensors. This loop continues till the landing occurs and the distance becomes zero. Understand, this is a simplified version of the Falcon control system, just for understanding. In reality, there will be number of inputs and actuators. The algorithm used in Falcon is the convex optimization algorithm. In simple terms, the onboard computer solves an optimization problem. Any optimization problem will have a function called objective function for which it will find the minima or maxima values. In Falcon's case, the objective function is the distance between the platform and the Falcon. We have to find the shortest distance, so minima should be determined. 
all optimization problems will have set of constraints within which we have solved the objective. Some of the constraints in Falcon are amount of fuel, which is restricted due to weight, maximum roll angle, limitation on velocity of descent to avoid crash, maximum fin deflection and so on. So, the minima of the objective function should be solved, subjected to these constraints. The objective function will be made up of the x, y and z position variables with respect to time. So, we actually get the optimal path at different time during the optimization. So, what is convex optimization? If the objective function has the convex shape shown, then we can say, it is convex optimization. It has well-established numerical iterative methods to solve for the minima, like the famous gradient descent method. So, if a problem is convex, implementation becomes easier. But, in Falcon landing, the objective function is not convex, making the problem non-convex optimization, which has no well-established methods to solve. Here comes the genius of Lars Blackmore, who designed the system for NASA Mars rover landing. Lars with other SpaceX engineers, converted the non-convex optimization to a convex optimization, which can now be solved using established computational methods. Thus, the genius of SpaceX and NASA has made this dream project come true. Whoa.